Today we're going to talk about how to export and import MySQL tables back into your database if something goes wrong and you need to back that up and then restore it to the server. I have a backup, an SQL backup. So what I wanted to show you is how, number one, you can back up your uh, MySQL tables and then how to restore them if you have an emergency. Okay, so let me go ahead and show you how to do that right now. Inside here, we have uh, some databases. Each one of these databases is going to have tables. And the one that I'm looking at is this one right here. And you can see as it opens up, you can see all the tables in there. Now what we want to do is we want to back one of these tables up and the table that we want to back up is going to be timeline stamps. If we look in there, we can see some columns. And these are basically uh, video bookmarks. But uh, let's say that something happened. I, I needed to restore that. If, if something goes corrupt in my table, I'm SOL. So uh, what I want to do is back this up. So. In PHP my admin I'm going to select timeline stamps and bring it up and you can see I have some timelines timeline stamps here then what we're gonna do is click on export and when we go to export uh, we're just gonna do the quick display only the minimal options and we're gonna go SQL is the format that I want to export my table timeline stamps and uh, I'm gonna use that one because that's how I'm gonna be importing it and I'll show you that in a minute but uh, we're going to do all the rows not just some of the rows and that's it we're good to go now all we need to do is hit go now I've already saved it here so what I can do is I'll just overwrite it so I'll overwrite that one with the new one just like that and it'll say hey you're about to overwrite it and I'm gonna go yeah okay do it so now it's been replaced and it's been downloaded so now it's gone from the server. A copy of it is now on my hard drive on my laptop. Safe and sound. What we want to do now is we're going to go ahead and delete the table timeline stamps. We're going to delete that because a horrible thing happened and it was corrupt. But luckily we have a backup, right? So. Um, Let's go ahead and delete it, and we've selected it, so now we're going to go to Operations, and down here in the very bottom, we can delete the table, drop. And then we'll just click on that. I better have it backed up, huh? <laughs> okay. It says you're about to destroy everything. Oh, let me turn on my highlighter here so you can see what's happening. Okay, enable foreign keys, check, boom, go. It's all going to be fine. It's deleted, so I do not have a table called timeline stamps but we need it it's an emergency obviously sirens and stuff all right so what we want to do now is restore it so we can continue on with our our lives on the internet because without our data we're in trouble <laughs> let's go to import now and you can choose a file and da, 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 SQL. So see, there's where your different formats would come in. Uh, whatever format you exported it in is what you want to import it in. Shit. But what we're going to do is we're going to choose that file. It's an SQL file. Timeline stamps. And then we're going to hit go. And hopefully it restores it, right? And the boss will be happy. Now I have uh, my timeline stamps back again, and I have all my records here. Remember, back up your data, because one day you might need it back. Computer automation. It can be very complicated, or it can be very simple. I'm going to show you a script to fill in, fill in passwords, and here's how it works. I trained the uh, application to understand when I type the letters J, P, and the number one, it's going to do something. And what's it going to do? It's going to type in my user email 
and my password. Let me do that again. And I'll show you how I did it. We'll make another one. But what I did is I gave it like a keyword and the, the letters that I wanted to do, J, the first letter of my name, J, and then P, password, and this is my first password, one. Okay, so there it is, it's done. So it just types that in for me and saves me a lot of trying to remember what my password was and typing. So I'll show you how I did it. I did it in this nifty little program called Macro Toolworks, which I'll have a link to. But here is the, uh, the one we just did where it typed in the user email and the password whenever I typed in the letters J, P, and the number one, it automatically triggered. And here's the trigger that I made for it. We're gonna make another one right now. We'll do uh, number two. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. We'll just go make another one to do it. We'll go to uh, insert and then we go to add macro and now we have a blank macro up here you can see it this is the one we had before and this is our new one we'll put it on property so you can see it this is my my login one and over here is blank so we're going to call it my login two like that okay and then we're going to go over to the content which we don't have any content yet now if you look at the content on this one it's got user email uh, and it has my password. Now what we're going to do is we're going to change this one and we're going to change this one to um, my email to at dot com okay and then we're going to we want after it types that in we want it to hit the tab key so to do that we say tab like that and then that'll automatically hit the tab key and then we're going to type in my password two and that'll be the end of that but we also need to have a trigger so if, if we look at the triggers we have no trigger but if we look at my login trigger we can see that's where you put the JP one so over here in the my login two, I'm going to add a keyboard shortcut and we're going to make it a text shortcut and when I type in the letters J P and the number two I want it to expand automatically which means type in all the content just automatically erase what I just typed in and put what I want in there and that's all there is to it so we have our properties it says my login to and uh, we have our content which is what we want typed out and then we have our triggers which is how we want to call it from any program all right so we just hit OK and now we can go try it out okay <clears throat> so we have two macros that we've made you saw the first one and then we just made a second one so what I'm going to do though is we're going to go ahead and run uh, the first uh, automation which is the one we did first and then we'll do the second one so you can see them both okay so the first one was JP1 automatically it puts in the password puts in the email all that's cool now we're gonna test out our new one which is uh, JP and the number two alright see so that's a completely different different one and uh, you know you can make these for Chrome can make them for uh, eBay Craigslist stuff like that and keep all your passwords together and know how to make them type out when you want them it just it's just uh, a lot faster so uh, check it out check it out you can get the program for free and try it out and see if it helps you save some time with some computer automation all right